Good morning. morning. <laughs> Welcome to President Dorman's final chapel at Westminster. We have a few announcements to share with you. Upcoming open door reflections are guest speakers Olivia Martin this Friday, April 22nd, and Reverend Jim Moore on Monday, April 25th. Roman Catholic Mass will be held on Saturday at 7 in the chapel, and open door worship will be on Sunday, April 24th at 7 in the chapel. The Habitat for Humanity Spring Break, team, Spring Break with a Purpose work team will share about their experience serving in Georgetown, South Carolina during spring break. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, you sent Jesus, our Good Shepherd, to gather us together. We, may we not wander from his flock, but follow wherever he leads, listening for his voice and staying near him until we are safely in your fold to live with you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I want to thank President Dorman for introducing us to uh, that uh, wonderful selection of music there. Um, the life of a college president is uh, probably unlike anything most of us in this room will ever know. There's highs, obviously, and struggles, and the journey goes, and uh, it's like the, the waves in and out. And so 
Uh, we're grateful to President Dorman for his time at Westminster College. It's hard to imagine this is your eighth year here. And time has flown by in many ways, and at other times it's, it has gone slowly. And I, I would hope that those slow times were when you could take in all of the, the majesty of this place and the love of this place, and I know the love of our students. And, and we've had the opportunity to do that together on a couple work trips, and, uh, and I ch chalk those up to being some of the most memorable times that I spend with college students, and I'm always reminded why I do what I do because of that. And uh, President Dorman first went on a work trip with 60 of us on two different buses to Biloxi, Mississippi, right after Hurricane Katrina. And uh, at that point, I wondered if he would ever come back because of <laughs> that experience. Uh, we lived in an uh, industrial building with about 300 other people, and um, the work was hot and buggy, I remember, and dirty as could be, but uh, fulfilling. We also just have come back from Georgetown, South Carolina, where you had the opportunity to spend time with uh, 25 or so of your newest best friends. And, uh, and they're smiling, those who were along on that trip, because we all have our own secret stories that we would tell you about President Dorman, uh, but we've been sworn to secrecy. What happened in Georgetown stays in Georgetown. And so we're grateful to you for that uh, part of your service. Um, you have been over the years a frequent chapel speaker, and I'm grateful for that because it, it is a reminder to the community that the faith of this place is important, and we want to continue to be able to rejoice and give thanks for that. At the same time, we also want to be able to realize that faith traditions are varied, and so we uh, continue to search for ways to reach out to other parts of of God's creation here at Westminster as we seek ways to uh, be faithful to those who aren't Christians. And so uh, we gather for worship in the chapel on this day to celebrate the gift of life that brought us here and the gift of your love for Jesus Christ who is your Lord. Um, I'm grateful for you, but I'm also grateful for your wife, Beverly, and for the many ways that she has made a difference on our campus especially with our Habitat for Humanity students. For many years, uh, several of you, I'm sure, have gone up to their house. Um, I call it the manse, I'm not sure. The president's home, up to the house, um, to bake cookies for a, a, you know, a, a bake sale. And that's really been a joyous time, and I think some folks who are here have been a part of that with her, and, and we want her to know that and, and uh, are grateful. Um, You've also been a leader in the charge for the Presbyterian uh, College and University Presidents. You served as the president of that organization, and as part of your role, uh, you have worked to uh, allow the dialogue f about what it means to be a church-related institution to uh, rise to the top, and that continues. And, and I'm grateful for that and for things that are coming down the road that we really can't talk a whole lot about yet but you really are the instigator of that. And so on behalf of all those presidents and chaplains who are not here uh, and will maybe never meet you, I thank you. So, Friends, uh, Beverly and Rick are the uh, parents of Kelly and Daniel, and uh, they're both grown and off doing their own thing. And uh, as people who are empty nesters ourselves, that's always a, a, an awkward time, but a fun time. Um, and uh, we celebrate with you all uh, your grandson, Sean, who is a joy to your lives, I'm sure. And uh, I think, is there another baby coming? Yeah, in September. So we'll rejoice when that happens as well. So friends, would you join me in welcoming President Dorman to chapel today? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jim, and thank you all for coming today for my senior chapel. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great privilege to be here. Um, there's a reason why you saw the video. <clears throat> the college president here gets a car, 
because we do a lot of traveling. I put about 15, 16,000 miles just on college business on the car a year, and so the college leases a car. When I first got here, we were in the middle of the lease with President Williamson's car, and I got in the car on the first day, and I was just kind of going through, and I opened up, and then the console was a CD. And it was a CD of Allison Krauss and Union Station. And I'd never listened to bluegrass before. I was not a fan of bluegrass, whatever. So I played the CD and fell in love with this group. This is not a Christian group. This is a bluegrass group. They do some Christian songs. You're going to hear two of them today. But it's a fabulous group. And I thought, I thought it would be a nice way because I was introduced to them literally on my first day here. And I thought it would be great to share a little bit of their music and musicality with you as well. I also felt that the theme and the music, the words of this song really had meaning for me. Um, what a blessing it has been for me to serve as the president for this college for these past eight years. But I'm going to be honest with you, it wasn't easy. This was a tough time. Three months after I, I arrived here, we had the start of the Great Recession. And the stock market crash would set, it, set in motion a whole series of things that are implicating colleges and universities even to this day throughout the United States. So it's, it's been a, a difficult period and it asks, and it really begged the question for me, you know, why me? Why now? Why here? And so that's sort of what the theme is. There is a reason for it all. So, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to just share these words with you. During spring break this year, I had the pleasure of accompanying Chaplain Moore and about 25 Westminster students to South Carolina during our annual spring break with a purpose mission trip to serve Habitat. And we have some of the folks in that group are with us today, and it's great to see you. This was my third such trip during my time as president. For those of you who have never participated in one of those, I really recommend it. It will be one of the great memories you take away from this institution. The students who sign up for these spring break trips come from a variety of faith backgrounds and varying levels of religious adherence. Some participate who have little religious affiliation at all. We call those the nuns. In fact, I've observed that those who have participated who are nuns often disclose that the experience somehow served as an epiphany for them in seeing what the power of Christian love can do in serving others who are much less fortunate than they. For these students, Spring Break with a Purpose opened an internal dialogue within their heart about what their true purpose in life may be. I'll never forget four years ago during a Habitat trip to Raleigh, North Carolina, when a student who was part of the group to videotape the week's work for a class project said to me when the week was done, he said, you know, President Dorman, I have never attended a church or thought myself to be religious, but having been part of this whole experience makes me want to rethink how I plan to live my life. Last month, while we were on our trip, we were all gathered together under Chaplain Moore's leadership, having evening reflections of one of the students who, by the way, disclosed that he was not particularly strong in faith, shared with us that he was so moved by the week's experience that he wondered aloud whether God had some reason to direct him to sign up for the trip. You know, it reminds me of the saying that I put on last year's birthday card, which I sent out to all the faculty and staff of the college, and it said the two best days of a person's life are the day you were born and the day you learn why. The point of all this is to say that for me, the same could be said about how I came to serve at Westminster eight years ago, and how on the eve of my retirement and my departure from this school, the work that I've done in education over the past 40 years was part of some grander plan laid out for me. As I reflect back on the chronology of my personal growth and career, I'm convinced that coincidence played no part in that development process. Rather, it was a series of choices presented at various points in my life, which, depending upon the choice that I made, would have taken me in vastly different directions. Behind those choices was always a voice, not some verbal articulation in my ear, mind you, 
but a sort of sixth sense in my heart that said, this isn't the right thing for you, so don't do it. Or, this is where you need to be, so go for it. And by listening to this inner voice, I've been taken on an incredible journey as an educator from the high school I taught at to Penn State, the University of Louisville, Otterbein University in Ohio, and finally here at Westminster. Wherever I landed, I've been vastly enriched by others and hopefully made at least some difference in the life of another or the organization that I serve. But I could not have gotten here without listening to that voice. You know, I've often thought that life is like a Lego set. Each life experience is a Lego piece that has a different shape and color laid out scattered on the floor from which we choose certain ones to form a shape that we're happy with. You have a lot of latitude in picking the pieces that you want to form you. Your time at Westminster allows you a huge array of choices from which to choose a multitude of experiences and is a key time in your life where you will have more latitude to do so than at any period in your life. But there's one key difference in how we form that final shape. Sometimes, sometimes, God chooses certain pieces for you, and you have to figure out how to best fit them in, and sometimes those pieces aren't at all what you would have chosen for yourself. The reality is that all of us will be challenged throughout our lives, and some may face painful tragedies, prompting the question, why is this happening to me? And what does it all mean? Is there a reason for it all? In his book entitled The Purpose Driven Life, Pastor Rick Warren says, experience is not what happens to you. It is what you do with what happens to you. He also says, God intentionally allows you to go through painful experiences to equip you for the ministry to others. Other people are going to find healing in your wounds. Your greatest life message and your most effective ministry will come out of your deepest hurts. You see, those Lego pieces that God sometimes chooses for you often are bigger than the others. And you can choose to place them at the foundation of what you are building for added strength, or you can place them right here, inhibiting your ability to see forward or keep building and therefore making the structure of your life more unstable. Your choice. If you accept these challenging life experiences as an opportunity to grow and strengthen your character as a person, then they will have proven to be salutary for you. You will be able to serve as an exemplar for others, and that will be part of your personal ministry. For myself, I look back on the past eight years as president here and feel very proud and blessed to have had the opportunity to serve this wonderful college and its people. Ten years ago, I had the opportunity to accept a presidency at another institution, but that little voice told me, it's not right for you, and I didn't pursue it. Two years later, the Westminster presidency opened, and I received a call from an employee of this school, whom I had known for 12 years previously, encouraging me to apply. I also remembered back when I worked at Penn State at the Center for the Study of Higher Education as a researcher another a doctoral student who was in the same office that I was in, another graduate student, happened to be a graduate of Westminster. And he would share with me many stories about this place and about his time here and his love for this school. Coincidences? I think not. Perhaps a little voice was there telling me to go for it. 
So I conclude this chapel reminded of the question posed by the student on the spring break with a purpose trip who asked, is there a reason for it all? I believe there is. Each of you in this chapel today have a very special gift for this world. The biggest role of going to college is to help you discover what that gift is. So choose among all those experiences, all those little Lego pieces that are scattered before you and wisely build something that you can be proud of. And don't be daunted when God gives you a piece that seems overwhelming and you're not quite sure how you will deal with it. You can. And if you recognize that it was given to you for a purpose, you will. Would you pray with me, please? Eternal God, we recognize that life brings us enormous joy and equally enormous challenges. As we go through life, help us to recognize that all of our experiences build upon one another and help to make us who we are. Grant that we may learn from each experience and to serve you through our personal ministry. Help us to hear your voice so that we may discern the best direction to take. May we also be comforted in knowing that through you, there is a reason for it all. Bless us as we go forth into this beautiful day in service to others, that each of us may be living examples of your word. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. President Dorman, not, uh, not bad for a senior chapel. That, that works. Uh, you know, when we, when we work somewhere a long time, people begin that process of saying goodbye to us. And we say goodbye in a variety of ways. One is we say thank you. And uh, we say thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts for allowing faith to exist here on our campus. At times, we often feel pushed back by that. Um, but also, thank you for being willing to stand before us and share your own faith in many ways. I remember a, a Seekers that you spoke at several years ago where you talked about um, uh, your faith journey and you talked about believing in ghosts and things like that. And it was just a, such a wonderful conversation among students and, and you as a person allowing that to come out. Same kinds of conversations on work trips, the same, same kind of conversation today. Uh, so thank you. Um, as, a, as a chapel staff, um, our students were trying to figure out how could we say thank you to you, and, and we came up with a way that uh, is not necessarily unique, but it is for us, and so uh, we want to be able to say thank, thank you to you. Um, thinking about all the time that you spent in Old Main working, and all the time that you spent here um, in the chapel worshiping, uh, we want you to remember all of that. And so uh, I'm going to invite Alicia to come forward. And uh, Emily Brune, why don't you come forward and help as well? Yeah, you. <laughs> so as you know, over top of Old Main, uh, we fly uh, one of the Westminster flags. And so if you want to open that up. Um, I think it goes the other way. There you go. So this is our way of saying thank you, and uh, I'm not sure what you do with a flag like this, except it, <laughs> you know, if, if you were a college student, I'm guessing it'd be on your dorm wall, uh, but. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So. Yeah. Thanks, ladies. Yeah, I'll probably fold it back up. Uh, as, uh, as part of our benediction today, uh, we're going to uh, listen to one more song. And this one is called A Living Prayer. And take this as God's words to you. Um, 
the, the lovely part of this particular band is their ability to sing at a pace where you can process the words and having the words on the screen will be wonderful for you and uh, just kind of meditate on the words of this message. So may the Lord bless you as you get ready to go forth uh, through this week and uh, into the rest of uh, the semester. It comforts me. 